AMS Lite, uh, I call it a dry box system, and you can get it on Maker's World there, and you can download and you can print all these parts for your uh, Bamboo AMS Lite. Um, I have mine top mounted here on my A1, and I have another one here I'm going to do, and I've had a request to go into more detail about exactly how this mounts, and I'm also going to have to make one little modification. Something I've found is because of the way the top mount is, and there's a slight tilt to it, the uh, two spools on this side tend to want to come off and that leads to it binding up or literally I took the lid off because it kept binding up and I was watching it and the whole spool just fell off. So I've got some little spool locks here and I'll show you how those go on and how to assemble these. These are also uh, the uh, STL of the files can be downloaded from Eckers World there. So we'll get on with this. So get all the parts and pieces together for the other one I've got sitting over here and we'll get it put together. So I was going to show you here how to put this uh, little adapter thing on here. Whoops, we don't want to lose that. Uh, if you look at the video online you see that uh, you just twist this clockwise, this is the green one here, that brings this piece off. Now, if you, as you watch the video, you notice that the uh, person making the video put their finger in here to push up on the release on these little plastic pieces right here. My fingers are too fat to do that. I, I can't get my finger up in there. So what I use is a small screwdriver. I just get that lined up there, and I push up, and it pops right up. And then I can turn that. Next one, turn it. Ooh, come back here. I need that. They don't usually fly out like that. So then it's a matter of uh, you lift this up. There'll be a little cap here that you got to get off. Make sure you don't mess with the spring. Just place this over the top of that. Place this back down over the top. Take your holders here and just snap them back in. And put the base piece back on. Just like that, and then when you're, this is green so it's left hand thread. But that will hold your spool on so it doesn't fall off and drive you crazy. Okay, once you get all your parts and pieces printed, uh, for th the uh, backs and the fronts, I used uh, what they call translucent um, PLA on this one. On the last one I did, I used PETG, but it doesn't really make any difference. Neither one of them is going to be clear. It does let you see how much film is left on the roll if you're not using clear or white, or translucent or white. If you're using a color, you can kind of look in there and see how much is left on the roll. Otherwise, you've got to pop the cover off and look. Uh, if it's white or uh, translucent. So you've got two halves and of course you got some for each side and they are different so you're going to have to get them together here. You have a piece that looks like this that will go in between. Like so. And you have a bunch of these little clips like this that just snap right over the Oops, I get, better get the right ones though. Snaps right over the connection there. Just like that. Now your little uh, wings here that are going to be holding the covers on, you need to put these on so the flat side is facing out. And there's some little dimples in there that you can see that these just pop into and then they will rotate like this to lock your front on. So you'll have three of those on each side of this for a total of six. So there's the basic assembly for the back. 
Okay, now at the top of here, you've got four holes. Two of them will be blanked off with these uh, little blank plugs. I use every color here, so it'll be easy to see. So I'm going to be putting this on this side. So I'm going to be using this corner and this corner. So these two corners over here are going to get these little blanks that just snap in. Now for your other two here, you've got a choice of uh, whether or not you want to use the PTFE tubing in there. I prefer to because it uh, will wear the PLA or PTG, whichever you use. It'll wear it out pretty quick. So these larger ones here, I hope you can see that, are big enough to put a short piece of PTFE tubing in, which is, uh, I don't know, probably 10 millimeters long after I cut it. It is important uh, to have those cut straight. So if you don't have one of these cutters, uh, I know there's a little jig you can download uh, to print out and then uh, you can cut it with an X-Acto knife, but this is actually for made for Capricorn tubing. And I've got a little scrap here of it, so that's what I'm using. You'll need to press your PTFE tubing into this little uh, grommet. It does have a split side on it and it can be a little bit uh, tough, but if you put it down on a hard surface and push on it, it'll go in there. So it'll end up like this. It'll be flush on one side, or the flat side, and just sticking out just a hair on the other side. And then once that goes in from the top, that'll snap in the hole. You have another piece that looks like so. It's going to go on underneath to lock it in place. And that'll also snap on there. So once you have those in place, you can proceed to put it on the AMS. It'd be better if this wasn't up here like this, but we'll, we'll work around it. This will be a somewhat snug fit. Now you'll want to put your spool holders on, and as I said, because this is a downhill side, I put these little uh, locks on there to which will hold the spool in. Whether or not the cover is going to fit is another thing. Because if it does, then I'll have to modify the cover. But uh, I had the spool fall off a couple times on one of the other ones, so putting these on there now. You want to make sure you get the right color in the right place here. Okay, so those are ready for some spools of filament. Okay, once you have the uh, spool of filament on, I haven't done the other side yet. And this uh, will spin on. Of course, this is the, the uh, clockwise rotation side over here. And this one over here will be left-hand thread. And if you're using uh, a spool that is not bamboo, and it's a larger one or thicker one, this can be turned around the other way so that the little wings are pointing out. But I can see right now that my cover is not going to fit on here without modifying something out here on the end. These uh, covers flip on like this, and I can see that that's going to hit there. I do have a prototype. This is the prototype here. This is a little relief thing that I'll be putting. I'll be uh, cutting a hole in this and then uh, gluing that in. I probably won't necessarily make it out of black, but this is just a prototype to uh, see how it work. Okay, there again, this side here will be left-hand thread. The little lock that screws on there. That'll hold it in place. And it's got a split in it, so you can't over tighten it or anything. If you over tighten it, it'll just pop and you'll have to tighten it up again. Now, as I said, obviously I cannot put the covers on this side yet because I need to make them little relief things. And I have not had a problem with the spools coming off on the other side, but it just it's just been on this side in positions three and four. And I think it's be a little bit because of gravity. Okay, each side has a place for a desk cut container. That's this guy right here, and there's a lid that prints with it. So I'll fill this up with desiccant, and hopefully I won't spill this all over the place. Then I'll fill a couple. Little beads are hard to pick up. And the little cover slides over the top. Now the way this fits in there, you see it'll run like this. It'll fits into an indent inside there. Then you'll have these horseshoe style clips right here. You'll put one at the top and one at the bottom. 
and they'll snap in. That holds everything in place in there and then when you need to uh, get in there to change that you just pop them horseshoe clips out. Another thing that goes on and I'm going to do it on this side because it'll be facing forward is uh, this is for two hygrometers and there's a cover that you can throw on the floor or not and that just snaps on that gives you your atmospheric. Okay, I've got my uh, pieces uh, cut and put in there for the or I'm going to call them hubcaps, cover those hubs there. Now to hold this here in in the center, oh, it's upside down. To hold this here in the center, there are these little clips right here. And they just fasten around the sides like that and then the whole thing will come off as a unit instead of uh, individual pieces. Uh, I do have one of mine set up that I take them off individually. I've got this kind of permanently in place just so I can swap individual spools, but that's not uh, necessary. Well, there it is. There is a video of uh, this on Maker's World or on doing this too, but I had some requests to make it something more detailed, so I thought I would do that. And again, make sure you're putting the right cover on the right side because they don't fit very well otherwise. And again, I've uh, modified mine with some uh, spool holders on the opposite side, on the downhill side, because as I said, I had uh, spool fall off a couple times and bind up so I don't like that so that will eliminate that problem since my plates were already made I am cutting an 89 millimeter hole in the middle of them to uh, accommodate the uh, I guess we'll call it a hub cap to go over that spool hub if I had not already had these printed I would have uh, just modified it and made that hole in uh, before I printed them out. But this works fine with CO2 laser and yes you can cut PLA and PETG with a CO2 laser. And it's a nice clean cut. So when you're done it'll look something like that. There's a look at straight up to, uh, into the front how this works. Uh, like I said on the uphill side or the back side I didn't need to worry about spools coming off I had no problems but um, I did have a spool come off a couple times on the uh, side facing the printer bed here so that's where I put these uh, locks on and then of course had to modify the covers for the dry enclosure but not a big deal. So yes there's some background noise because I've got every one of these printers running right now and uh, of course the uh, A1's are fairly quiet. All the bed slinger printers are fairly quiet, but the Core XY printers, uh, the P1S right here, uh, along with the X1 carbons, and any Core XY printer is going to be noisy. You're going to have a lot of noise from it. That's just the way it is. But anyway, I wanted to uh, show what I did with these dry boxes. I know people had asked to see that more in detail, and then I decided to show the modification too by putting on the hubcaps. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting the thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger, in the basement office, print farm. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.